Non è neanche tu, no, io no. What class of person was he? Whether he was atheist or theist, what he was? Theist or atheist? You? What? Ask him. He said he's a good devotee. Good devotee? He wants to be more oh, like him. <laughs> oh, so you should practice like him? <laughs> No, no, never. But he was atheist, atheist. He believed in God. Everywhere it appears that he believed in God. But he was against him. He was against him. And he wanted to kill him. And he has no value for any his devotee because he was against himself God. He wanted to conquer him and defeat him. This was the thing. Because it was natural for him. Why? Natural? Because he was the associates of Narayan Jayavijaya. Why he fell down from Narayan Lok? You know? Why? Oh, Shamrani should explain in a very brief, not so much. At one certain stick, don't do it. You asked why he fell down from Vaikuntha. <coughs> Vaikuntha is a place. Gulok is a place out of Maya. Huh? It is beyond virginity. No chance of falling down from there. But even we see that he has fell down. Why? Yudhisthira Maharaj asked Narad Muni that you say that he was cursed by the sages, but I don't believe that any associate of the Lord in Vaikuntha could fall down. They all have spiritual bodies, not material bodies, mm. and they can never be touched by matter. So... No curse is there. Nothing. But yet we see that he has fallen down. And how, why? Madhvacharya comments... Yes, the, it, presently. Madhvacharya comments that whether an associate of the Lord is cursed or blessed, it doesn't make any difference because he's totally unaffected. Why you are not giving examples from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur ways or more? Madhva Charja has never written like this, as far as I know. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti yes. our Prabhupada quotes Madhva Charya, but Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that Krishna's Icha Shakti, Yoga Maya, was actually responsible for their coming to this world and not Mahamaya. As everything, all propensities that we have in this world are present in its original perfect form in the Lord, the Lord also has Vira Ras, or chivalrous uh, tendencies. He likes to mock fight, just as boys like to mock fight in this world. But who in Vaikuntha would fight with him because everyone worships him in awe and reverence? So, seeing the Lord's desire and seeing the desire of Jai and Bajai to always please the Lord, she personally inspired them to become angry when the four Kamaras tried to enter 
in their travels, the four Kumaras came into Vaikuntha, but the gatekeepers blocked their path. So the four Kumaras told them, Oh, you have this materialistic mind, you're affected by the modes of nature, you're not qualified to be in Vaikuntha. But this was all the arrangement by Yogamaya, so that the Lord could come to this world as Nishringadev and fulfill his fighting propensity. He would never fight with a demon or an atheist, only if his devotee is qualified to fight with him. So his devotee had to come to this world with him to fight with him and fulfill that propensity. Very good. But some uh, what correction is needed. What is the nature of bhakti? You should know first. I think that so many persons are here. But they should know the nature of, pure nature of bhakti. Always to please, always to satisfy Lord. Nothing else. When the Jai Vijay saw, eternal liberated. When they saw. There is something in my Prabhu heart. He wants to uh, test the, enjoy, beer rush. They knew it. And they became very, very, how we can do? If now we are fighting, we cannot fight in this body. But I want to, we want to satisfy him. Oh, at once Naran knew, oh, they want to fulfill my desire. <coughs> at once he remembered Yogamaya. And he told to them, wait a little, I will give you a chance, better chance, that you can fight me and you can satisfy me. And by the Yogamaya, four Kumars were attracted to here. There was no chance to be angry there. This place is not like so. But even by the yoga maya, they became angry and they wanted to stop him because they were naked. There was no also chance that these two Jai Vijay are going to check him. Stop. Anyone cannot stop anyone there. So, but Jogmaya did it. And at once, oh, these four Kumars coming here naked, oh, this be in a proper dress and to go to our Prabhu. This thought came. And at once they stopped and at once they became angry and at once they gave a cause. When cause was given, then, oh, they realized. What we have done? We have done offense. But why this offense came? And at once in the meantime, Narayan himself, oh you should forgive my two boys, always serving. You should forgive them. Then they realized. Then Narayan took off his Jogmaya. Now they were free of Yogamaya. She now lamenting and weeping. But Narayan told, Oh, I have done like this. I wanted to play in this world and I wanted to enjoy the rush. So I have fulfilled the desire of my two, this ever, my eternal servants. Now they will go there and in three works they will fulfill my desire and I will test this rest from them. Otherwise anyone is not qualified to, to enjoy me the virus. So he was not deviated from there. In one form they were always there and in other form oh, they came like here in what? Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, Ramana Kumakarana, Sisupalanda. 
and from Krishna, or they were killed, and they were purified, and they again went to Narayan Lok. So from Golok Vrindavan, or from Narayan Lok, anyone never falls, never deficient. You can tell about Chitra Ketu Maharaj. Huh? But he, he was not like so. O Bharat Maharaj, he has attained bhav, rati mood, and from there anyone does not. So for, 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 what? For siksha. For teaching. So, we should try to know all this. We should not def make any offense in the Lord's feet of any high class of the Lord. Never. So in this way, Jai Vijay where only Hirnakaspu and Hirnakaspu. So they have faith in God. But because God, that God has killed his brother, so he was against him. And he wanted to take revenge by killing that Bhagavan God. So he was against Prahlad Narayan. Why you are in that side? I don't want. I have given you birth. I have given you everything. I have supported a nurse. I am giving you to school to learn. Still I am nourishing and supporting you. But why you are in the side of that Vishnu? I don't like. You are like a uh, kulhari. X. 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 X, you know? Handle of X. Alone X cannot do. But when some handle, handle will be there given. <laughs> or then pipe. Oh. She will cu cut what? The tree. The tree. Yes. Which, tree? which handle was that? So you are like handle. He told. Hmm? X cannot do anything. Oh, only by the handle, any trees can be cut off. You are cutting also. Asurkul Kalanka, Asurkula Kulanga. Ah, Kulanga. Kulhari ka bed tum hai. So you are like that. And from here begins this story. Here, there was a council in the Council of Maharaj Yudhishthi when fire sacrifice was done and Krishna took his chakra and cut it, the head of Shishupa and a light came from his body and it was mixed in Krishna Lord's faith. Yudhishthi Maharaj told, oh how wonderful this, how wonderful. How we mixed in the in Krishna? How it began? So many Rishis and Maharshi oh, doing astrologies, hard astrologies, day and night, not sleeping, standing on their toe, sometimes in hands toe, body oh, upside, and not taking water. Even no air. No air. And, and after long time they cannot have this position. And he, in a moment he has. How wonderful this. Hmm? One thing more. Krishna is neutral. God is neutral to all. All are his part and person. But why he takes this side of demigods and um, he becomes um, and he takes, gives helps to uh, gods and cutting, killing them all, um, all demons. Why? Why he has some, this feeling between partiality between demigods and demons? For him, both are same. And for this, answering this question, Krishna is always neutral. 
always there. But a speciality is that he is not, he is not uh, impartial. Or what word more? Neutral. 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 Oh, when devotees are there. If devotees are there, he cannot be neutral. For general, he is neutral. Other, he is not God. God is love. And love is God. So, oh, Krishna is love. love. Then where love lives, the abode of love. Who is devotee? Oh, he must be towards them. So he is telling all these things hmm, about Hiranyakasipu and Prahlad Maharaj. If anyone uh, like Prahlad Maharaj was sent to his school hmm, and after some days it may be four months, five months oh, he returned back from the school his mother decorated him and then Hiranyakasu came and took in his lap and very smiling and very you know, like uh, caressing him. Oh, then, oh, my dear son, oh, what you have learnt from your school, from your school day? And then he replied, boldly, hmm? what? Oh, you should sit down there, not coming and going anywhere. You should sit any one place. If you want to come, but never go. Sit down like a statue. <laughs> Hmm. He told him, <clears throat> Prahlad Maharaj came in the lap of his father. Not so much. And his father, his heart was melting with parental affection. Tears came in his eyes. He's so proud. My son is Very interesting subject. so qualified. You can read Srimad Bhagavatam, but the deep meaning cannot come. You cannot read. Even you are hearing from others, but if they are not high class of devotees, they cannot be. Only Vishwana Chakvarti Thakur Ji Goswami, Sanatan Goswami Bhad, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, they can give. In their lives, otherwise anyone cannot. So try to. Oh, uh, we are telling from Vishwana Chakvarti Thakur in Ji Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. So, Tat Sadhu Manne Asuravaya dehinam sada samudvigna dia asadgahat hitvatma patam grihamanda kupam vadam gatim yadharima swayita. Oh, my dear father, Asuravaya dehinam, O oh best among all of the demons. Hearing this, Vernak Pasul become very happy <laughs> that I am. The demigods, they are very proud of uh, that we are demigods. So they are also very proud. Tasarumanye Asure Varya Dehinam, oh, best of the demons. There is, in this world, those who have accepted this body which is temporary, to be the Self and to be the source of happiness and basis of happiness, who accept this thing to be so real, those persons, sada sam udvigna dhyam asat graha, accepting these temporary things, they become constantly afflicted with one problem after another, one anxiety after another, like endless waves in an ocean, and they are always embarrassed. So, the best thing that I have learned is that such persons, those people, they have fallen into a deep dark well, 
here, household life, to be uh, identified, identified with the body and to consider the family members and the household goods and properties and furniture and wealth and all of these things to be mine. This is like a deep, dark well. So the bodily conception of life is like a very dark and dangerous well. It is a, this path of life is the path which completely checks up the progress of the soul towards the goal of life, the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the best thing that I've learned is that such persons should get out of that dark well and banam gatem yad harim ashrayeta they should go to the forest, especially banam brindavan, to this forest. Being in the forest, what does it mean to retire to the forest? It means to go to that holy place, which is holy, especially because of the presence of pure devotees. And being in very good association, yad harim ashrayeta they should take unconditional shelter and surrender at the lotus feet of Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here, in Srila Vishnu Thakur, in his commentary, he is explaining what does it mean, Griyamanda Kupam, to be fallen in a dark well in this world. Once upon a time, uh, one man was in the forest and he heard the sound of a tiger. And being afraid, he tried to run away because the tiger, there's a chance that the tiger could eat him. He was looking here and there for some shelter, but he couldn't find anywhere. Finally, he came across a blind well. It was a well which was disused and some grass and trees had grown over the top. So taking the help of two branches of a tree, he lowered himself down into the well, thinking that, oh, the tiger cannot come down here to get me. So he began to lower himself down into the well. But as he was going down, then he saw at the bottom of the well, it was dry. There was no water there. And there were so many snakes living. And they raised their hoods. And they were ready to bite him. So now he was really in a predicament. He's hanging from two branches halfway down a well. At the bottom, there are so many snakes, very poisonous snakes waiting to bite him. And at the top, there's a ferocious tiger just waiting to eat him. So at that time, he was suffering so much and he was in so much anxiety. But on the branch of the tree, there was uh, the hive, a honeycomb, a beehive. So on the, um, on the top of the well, there were two rats. One rat was black and one rat was white. And they were nibbling away at the very same branches that he was holding on to. So now it was only a question of time. Either he had to climb out and be eaten by the tiger. Otherwise, he would have to go down and be bitten by the snakes. Otherwise, if he stays where he is, then anyway, the rats will gradually, gradually eat through the branches and he must go down. So whatever he does, he must suffer and he must come to a very gruesome end. What to do? So at that time, when he was in this very precarious situation, there was a honeycomb on the branch of the tree, and because the tree was shaking, some honey was dripping. And it just happened to be dripping very, very close to his face. Some drops were coming down, very close to his face. So, taking this golden opportunity, he stuck out his tongue, like that. And a drop of honey came on the tip of his tongue. Then, oh, he took that honey into his mouth and began to relish the flavor of the honey. How sweet, how relishable, and he felt some happiness. So this is the example of all the conditioned souls, like you and I, here in this world. We're in a very dangerous situation. Especially lusty persons, Sanskrit, those who are engaged in sense gratification. They are in this position, or they are now going to just in a moment, anyhow, Oh, they are going to die. No way to be set. One is, one is set. But we will tell him afterward. It seems, it seems that this person is now expressing some happiness. It seems that in this world, there are so many people who, they appear to be happy. They appear to be well situated. 
They appear to be content and satisfied with their situation. But what is their happiness? It is exactly like the happiness of this man in this well when he's tasting a drop of honey. Why? All the uh, components of this uh, analogy, they represent so many things in our life. First of all, we see the snakes. The snakes are hissing. What does it mean? So many problems. One after another, like webs, ocean of webs. Oh, this is end. Oh, after that we will be happy. And there's an oh, more vigor coming. So many problems in this world. Those who are sufferers. Oh, they can know more, more better than them. So, in this world, it is a very astonishing thing. This world is made of problems. Nothing else. It is only problems. Yet, the conditioned soul in this world, when he meets a problem, is very surprised. Oh, where did this problem come from? And then he overcomes it with a great hope and aspiration that when this problem is gone, all of my problems are gone. And then, what a surprise! Another problem comes. Not only one. <laughs> so many. Not one at a time. Oh, five at a time, six at a time. So these are like so many poisonous snakes. Then, at the top of the, of the well, there is a tiger. This tiger represents death. This tiger represents death. Oh, death is waiting for everyone in this world. It must come and devour them and take away everything. No fixed time. Or just still it can come. He will not, he will not give I have one minute time that you should speak with others and do At once. Jump. And then? Then we see that this... What are the two trees? This person was hanging from two trees. These two trees are our karma, our fruitive activities, good and bad. Pious and impious. Our life is maintained by what? Oh, we are living our life only in the uh, uh, experience of our, the reactions of our pious and impious activities. This is the duration of our life. Yet we also know that the duration of our life is being taken away moment by moment. So there were two rats eating those branches. One black rat, one white rat. What is that? The black rat means night time. And the white rat means daytime. So we are very happy, another day came and went, but actually each day and night is going and they never come back. And in this way our duration of life is being gnawed away, like two rats taking away the, our duration of life. So in this condition, very precarious... All around problems and all these things. And in that all, one drop of honey coming, what is... One draw. So even though we are in this very dangerous predicament, we feel we may feel some happiness and contentment. That is like the drop of honey. So in this analogy, what does the drop of honey represent? That represents the affection of our friends and family members in this world. After suffering so much, being abused and, and uh, treated badly so, uh, so many times in the course of doing one's work, then that man, he returns to his home. And his wife meets him with very sweet words. Oh honey, you're back. I was waiting to see you. And he takes this, this honey. His children come and jump in his lap. Oh daddy, 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 give me a hundred dollars. <laughs> and in this way, though he's suffering, and though there's danger everywhere, when he takes this one drop of honey in the form of the affection of so many other people in this world to whom he has a, with whom he has a temporary relationship, then he feels... Oh, my life is successful. This is the purport of the verse spoken by Prahlad. Thank you. So, we are all in these situations, problems. How yet anyone can be happy in this even situation? Another example has given, supplementary. There was a deer. No? He was in the very good green forest. And he was grazing there. 
But at once, he saw, he surrounded with so many problems. One side, one hunter with two Alsatian dogs. Another side, he has put fire, forest forest like that. And one side, oh, there was a river, very big and deep. And one side, oh, very big net. So he was surrounded. And he saw that. And he became very, what? Frightened. What to do? At once he closed his eyes. Oh, Krishna, I am yours. I am taking your Saranagati. Oh, save me, save me. And he took shelter. When he took shelter, at once Krishna, what did? A big wind came. Oh, with taking so many puddles and dust. And it came in the eyes of that hunter. And he was doing this. And thus, from hand it, it, uh, uh, and it came in the mouth or eyes of oh, dogs. The dogs were killed. No, at once. And it was some raining. So fire came. Extinguished. And moreover, with rain, oh, the fire was totally stopped. And net in wind. Oh, it went so in so far in the sky and here and there. So four, three sides were empty and he jumped and <laughs> ran away. So if anyone in that well, even, and chanting, it may be that by the mercy of Krishna any hunter will come and hunt that tiger that day. <coughs> and he will give a rope, oh, you should take it and come out. And he will say, Krishna is so merciful. So we are surrounded by this. Guru realizes this. And he wants to help all. One side death, one side so many problems, and one side oh, some mother is coming, rats are cutting. So you are all in this situation, you are not understanding. Don't think that this is our first life, first birth. You have enjoyed so much sex, sex, sex life. And you are so much uh, lusty, like pig and hogs, always day and night, not resting, taking. And so many children. You are so... Even you... You were demigods. <coughs> you have also come in <coughs> human form, but you lost that time. And again after lakhs and lakhs birth, you are now here, <coughs> in the association. Very good body, like boat, strong boat, and wind favorable. <coughs> what is Krishna has arranged for so high class of association. Krishna has given you all these things. But even you want, oh, I want a very teeny as a girl, very beautiful, I want to marry and I want to test what? Sense gratification. Foolish persons and mad persons. I cannot give any good name for them. <laughs> I don't know. My English is too bad. <laughs> huh? Oh, rascals, rascals. No harm. Don't be angry with me. But rascals, oh, more than hogs and pigs. Oh, my dear, uh, non scan uh, rascals, don't go there. At once turn out and be with me and back to God and back to home. <laughs> old person, why they want 
or to marry again, I don't know. <laughs> Very lusty. <laughs> oh, my dear friends, or oh, don't be angry with me, I am your well-wisher, <laughs> eternal well-wisher. <laughs> so, come and follow me. I was like also, also like you. <laughs> but in the very morning age, I gave up. Forever. So by the order of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, my Gurudev and my Guru Parampara have come to save you from this lust of ocean of lust. Don't go there. Otherwise, big Mahabharat battle is coming and you will be oh, killed. <laughs> so you should try to realize this. Or I may come again in the morning, evening 5, 5.30 or 5. Or drama will be some less. Avishek and everything, our classes will be first class. And then after that, or uh, some. Uh, Avishek? No, not Avishek. But my classes, and then some drama play, and then it will be some darkness like evening. And when sun is going to set, at that time, oh, we will do Abhishek and Archan and then Arti at the same time and then we will offer something to and then Charnamrit will be given to all. Yeah. And be free from worldly all these things from Andhakov that has been written in Prahlad Charitra. Be very careful. Gaur Pramana
Pasaro back to Big Nami Nessing Kadi Sing Nessing Day Bhagwan Ki Jai Satya Vashri Parad Maharaj Ki Hey. Yes, coming. Adio. Thank you. Hey. Ah, Mr. Tamanimati. Sachi Putra Matras Parupa.